Hey guys, I'm back with Jennifer Stilton for Mars in the Deep Jungle. So we have read this this book, this this book, and but I have finished reading all this, so I am going to read this book. So let's get started. General Stilton. What is this? <laughs> How curious is it, Dr. Frankfurt? I was lying on the precious chest couch. It, made, it was made of soft, fluffy cat fur, but I wasn't very comfortable. I was worried. How serious is it, is it Dr. Frankfurt? I'm a motionless whiskers. The doctor leaned back. In his chair. Ack. Ack. The f first I have half to know more. He squeaked in his funny accent. When did this thing start? I sighed. I was never the private mouse in the block. In fact, I guess you could say I've always been a bit of a friggy mouse. I've never enjoyed spooky holidays like Halloween. Just like this one. I I hide my I hide it in my mouse hole on the first of July. Fireworks made me very nervous. But lately it seems like everything was making me jumpy. Well, at first I was only afraid to go into a dentist, but then I suddenly became afraid of the elevators. Then came the fear of flying. That was all followed by a fear of spiders, snakes, closed spaces, and crowds. After that, I became afraid of heights and the dark. I took a deep breath. Just talking about all my fears was making me afraid. Oh yes, I almost forgot, doctor. I added, I'm also a cat. Dr. Schumpfer waved his paw. You're a mouse. You have... So the half is half. You have to be afraid of cats, he said. I turned my chair nervously. Then I sat up. Please, Dr. Schenkfer, I squeaked. Give it to me, in, it to me straight. He shook his head solemnly. Well, this could be serious, he began. Or it could not be. Th this is up to you. I scratched my head. Well, is the chair going to take long? I asked. The doctor jotted down some notes on a pad. Well, it could be long, he said. Well, it could be long, he said. Or, uh, or it could be not long. This is up to you. I think he have to fear his, um, he have to face his fear to, Make the cure. Now I was confused. If everything was up to me, what was I paying the most famous psychiatrist in the New Mouth City to do? This will this treatment be expes expensive? I asked. The doctor stood up. Well, it could be expensive, he said, or it could not be. This is up to you. The resident was being. To sound like a broken record. Just then, I put his paw on the, my shoulder. Remember, this is all up to you, he repeated. You must face your fears. Otherwise, you will never get well. So it's well. See, I said it was that. I will see you next Wednesday for now. It will be... One hundred dollars. Thank you. I left Dr. Schimpfer's office feeling much lighter. That's because my wallet was completely empty. Well, if the most famous psychiatrist in the New Mouth City said it was all up to me to get well, then I guess it was. What's up, Geronimo? For the next few days, I couldn't leave the house. What if it rained? What if a giant cat with two heads attacked me? Well... That's a 
not good here, I think. Yes, I had to face the fact that I was getting worse. I was afraid of everything. Then one morning, the phone rang. Hello, children speaking. Your name is children. I murmured. It was and it was Mrs. Tercia. She she has a special correspondent for the newspaper, and I run the Rodent Gazette. It is Mount Allen's most popular paper. Your name is Will. Have you been? She squeaked. And my sister squeaked. My sister. It's been days since you were in the office. I could tell she was annoyed. Did you forget about the two television interviews, and what of the conference at the press ball? Have you lost your calendar, or maybe you're just trying to cheat, Brain? I could hear her thumping her paw angrily on the desk. Uh oh! When my sister gets mad, she like my like my uncle cheese belly when the deli. Runs out of the mozzarella balls. There's no calming her down. Oh well, you see, I mumbled. I wasn't feeling too well. Maybe, but I'll be there tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow for sure. All in thirty seconds flat. The next day, I made a decision, and it was time to get off my tail. I couldn't stay inside forever. I took a deep breath and forced myself to leave the house. I took the ter- stairs. I wasn't ready for the elevator yet. I was too afraid. Of closed spaces. Then I opened the front door and stuck my snout outside. It was so noisy, I could barely hear myself think. Car horns blared. Delivery trucks trembled down the street. Had it always been this loud? Carefully, I set upon the pavement. Nothing happened. I was so relieved. I did it. I, I really did it. Why was I so afraid to go out? It's not big deal. At last. Things were starting to look up. I walked to the newsstand, newsstand to buy a paper. I had hardly opened it when, one, I heard. I hardly opened it when two, a f- flower pot fell from a window ledge, hitting me on the head. Three, stumbling, I crashed right into a lamp post. Four, then I tripped on a mouse hole hole cover. Five, I fell and bashed my snout on the hard pavement. Six, as I was getting up, a taxi ran over my tail. That, then a pigeon decided to poop on my nose. And it happened all in thirty seconds flat. Help! I shrieked in a panic. I immediately scampered back home. See, I was right along. I squeaked out loud. Going out is dangerous business. From now on, I'm staying put. I locked the door. I took a little while. I had added to five, five. I added five extra dead bolts. You can never be so safe. No shots, please. Thea called again the next day. She was at the office, even though it was Sunday. Janemo, how are you? She asked. Well, um, I've, I've got a cold. I remember I pretended to sneeze. Ah, choo! There was silence on the other end. Could my sister tell I was faking? Well, don't worry. She, she finally squeaked. We'll just run you right over to Doctor Goodpaws. He'll give you something to get rid of your cold. Maybe a couple of shots will do the trick. My eyes nearly popped out of my fur. No! I shrieked in a terror. No shots, please. I'm. Already feeling much better. I just need to relax at home for a few more days. You know, um, when it's getting kind of suspicious for me. More silence from the other end. Uh oh, my sister wasn't buying it. So I heard you when you see the doctor. So I heard you. You went to see Doctor Shrimp first. You remembered at last. Did you have a problem, Jeremy? I heard another voice in the background. Jeremy has a problem. Maybe he should get his snout out of those books. That mouse is too brainy for his own good. I groaned. Ah,、uh, it was my annoying cousin Trap. He runs a thrift store called Cheap Junk for less. He tells the worst jokes. And he loved to play tricks on me.
Then I heard another smaller voice. What's the matter with Uncle Geronimo? Can I say hello to him? He it squeaked. I smelled. It was my favorite nephew, Benjamin. The next thing I knew, my sister had put me on the speaker phone. Go ahead, tell us everything, Geronimo. She demanded. I chewed my whiskers. Well, I went to see Doctor Shrinkford because I sure to have a little problem, my man. I began. When I was done talking, Trap was the first to pipe up. So what did Doctor Shrink Shrinkford think? Tell you to do? He asked. I told him about the doctor's advice. If I wanted to get rid of my fears, I had to face them. Only I was too afraid to start. A package for Mister Stilton. Half an hour later, the doorbell rang. Ring, ring, ring. I decided not to answer it, but the doorbell kept ringing. It was ten times worse than the thing of the toaster room, which I was now afraid of. I wanted to stick my head under. Under water to drown out the horrible noise. Finally, I went to the door. A package for Mister Thornton. A small voice squeaked. I didn't move. Then I heard a loud sniff. Hmm, this smells like a box of cheesy chews to me. The voice continued. What a lucky mouse! Instantly, my mouth began to water. I scratched my head. I couldn't just leave a box of cheesy chews on my front step. They would melt for sure. All of that delicious chocolate and cheese gone to waste. It was unthinkable. It was imaginable. It was a mousey. I waited for a couple of minutes. Then I carefully unlocked the door. I stung my snout outside. So instantly, my mouth began to water. Means like he was full of. A lot of spit, saliva, in his mouth because he, because he liked this box of cheese chews, cheesy chews. Before I could even squeak, six paws grabbed me. They lifted me up and threw me in in the car. Help! I shrieked. I'm being mouse snapped. Someone stared at the car. We shot off a a squeal of tires. I felt like I was in a movie. You know, one of those high speed cat and mouse adventures movies. Only this wasn't a movie. It was real. I blinked at the wheel stirred at my sister Thea with my cousin Trap at her side. My young nephew Benjamin kept me company in the back. But I'm afraid to go out. I shrieked in terror. Trap. Squeaked. Oh, don't be such a baby! He shoved in a cheesy chew in my mouth. I wanted to tell him I wasn't a baby. I just had a problem with leaving my house, and with、uh, driving in fast cars, and with putting my paws under those dr- paw dryers in public bathrooms. They could be so hot, a mouse could burn his or her f- fur right off. What a not. Unthinkable, um, trouble. Um, but I couldn't say a word. My mouth was full. Oh, how I love my cheesy chews! Trevor was happily squeaking like, "Tell me, cousinkins," he babbled. "Do you like the dark chocolates with the blue cheese filling best?" Or the cheddar and caramel creams. Without waiting for a reply, he shoved another cheesy chew in my mouth. It was so good, my mood was beginning to lift. Madame sat next to me, happily nibbling away. Look, Uncle Jeremy, he squeaked. There's a caramel Swiss dip, my favorite. He offered a mozzarella and marshmallow roll to Thea. Try this one, Auntie, he said. It's yummy, yummy. I must say the cheesy chews were delicious. We polished them off in a jiffy. I was so busy munching chocolates that I lost track of time. Suddenly the car stopped. <coughs> make way! Make way! I got out. That's when it hit me. We are at the airport. I hate airports, and it's not just because I hate to fly. Airports are still crowded and busy. All of those rodents rushing around. It's enough to give me a mouse-sized headache. Why have you brought me here? I asked in a panic. My cousin Trap winked at me and laughed. Oh, we're just getting started, Jerkins. He said mysteriously. What do you mean? I asked. 
I was be beginning to get worried, 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 worried. He was so worried in his head. He had only worry. But before I could say another word, trap shoved me in the luggage cart. Let the fun and games begin! He squeaked. Then he pushed me at the back break neck and speed through the airport. Make way! Make way! He screamed with glee. Don't you just love speeding? This is the airport. You can just listen at the rate. No! I wailed in a horror, but my cousin was on a roll. And I'm not talking about the rolling rocket car. Trap was running so fast his paws barely touched the ground. Suddenly, he stopped in front of the VIR, very important rodent, waiting lunch. A pretty female mouse was, with blonde fur was coming out. She was wearing a very trendy sapphire outfit, outfit and a sonic cat fur vest and a pair of laced up leather boots. A necklace made of shark's teeth complete the look. Shark teeth, necklace, cat first vest, leather boots. Shark, shark's teeth. Trap stopped me in front of the stranger. I smoothed my fur. The pretty mouse seemed to be straight right at me. Oh my, she exclaimed. Aren't you George Nemo Stilton, the famous writer? I blushed in the end of the, my whiskers. The mouse tore her shark's teeth necklace. Then she leaned towards me. Can I have your autograph? She asked. I've read all of your books. They're so exciting. I think my favorite one is The Curse of the Cheese Pyramid. It made me want to travel to Egypt. I also enjoyed Cat and Mouse in the Haunted House. It was gripping. Only a very special mouse could write so well. But a Cat and Mouse in a Haunted House is this one. Ta-da! Should I read this? No, I should read what I was reading. I was flattered. It was so nice to meet a fan, especially a pretty one. <laughs> I was about to say something clever when Trap took off again. We brabbled towards the elevator with a squeal of tires. We bought her, yeah. I'm afraid of elevators. Months later, my cousin dumped me off in the luggage cart. He landed me half on the floor. Oops a daisy, Chap chuckled. He pickled myself up. Then I straightened my glasses. My cousin hit the button on the wall next to us. That's when I realized we made it to the elevator. No, I shrieked at the top of my lungs. I can't get on that. I'm afraid of elevators. But Trap just twirled his tail. Don't worry, Jerkins, he, he cried. There's nothing to it. There's nothing to it. Just don't think about it. The elevator doors opened. I tried to run away, but Trap stuck out his paw. I tripped before I could stop myself. I had to roll right into the elevator. Trap hopped in behind me. See? Nothing to it, he said. The door slid shut. I gulped. Mm. Then closed my eyes. I would never make it. I was, I was already having problems breathing. My tail was trembling. My whiskers were dripping with sweat. It doesn't get any worse than this, I thought. But then it did. My trap stumbled on my paw. I shrieked. Ah! The pain was horrible. At last the doors opened. No need to thank me, squeaked the cousin's cousin happily. I told you, just don't think about it. Think about the pain, trap. I mean, Jordan McDuffton. I'm afraid of flying. Okay, it's kind of chapters like, I'm afraid of da-da-da. <laughs> By now, I heard I had enough. Take me back home, I instead. I got on the elevator, but I'm not getting on a plane. I'm afraid of flying. As usual, my cousin seemed to 